He spoke creation into being. Every time he spoke his word, it happened. That word that was spoken, that word that was uttered, that word of God, the logos of God, the logos of God is the word of God that encompasses all of the, re the, the, the revelation of God, the embodiment of truth. All of that is called the logos of God. The Bible says the thoughts, the expressions, do you understand? The principles, the ideas, the wisdom, the understanding of God, all of that is called the logos of God. That logos became flesh and dwelt among us. Do you understand this? Jesus was no ordinary man. He was born of a virgin. The life came from the Holy Spirit. And he proved it by the resurrection from the dead. He proved it by the ascension. Oh, glory to God. When he went away from this world and went to heaven, thanks be unto God. Hallelujah, he's coming again. Hallelujah. This Jesus that I talked to you about, the living son of God. And you know why he came? He came to make us like him. He came to give us the same life that he had. He came to bring forth more sons unto glory. That's what he came for. Now he calls us his brethren. That means that we are like him. Oh. Look at this. Romans chapter 8. Let's read from verse 14. And we'll take it to, look at this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Next verse. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. You see, he's our heavenly Father now. So God is not only our God, he's our Father. Glory to God. Look at the next verse. The Spirit itself. Now the old King James translation uses the term itself. It should be himself because the Spirit is a person. So, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Say, so how are you going to know when you're a child of God? The Holy Spirit will bear witness with you on the inside. You will know inside you. There is a knowledge that the Holy Spirit gives you on the inside that you are a, a child of God. When you're born again, when you give your heart to Christ and receive eternal life into him. Hallelujah. Every minister of the gospel should be able to give people an opportunity to receive salvation. You do that. Give people an opportunity. Explain to them how to receive salvation. Explain it. Because if you don't explain it, they may never understand it. And they would think you're talking religion. But you're not talking religion. Look at this. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now look at the next thing. And if children, if we are the children of God, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. That's wonderful. That's amazing. Hallelujah. We're joint heirs with Christ. Oh, oh, glory to God. Joint heirs with Christ. Say, I'm a joint heir. Say, I'm a joint heir with Christ. I don't know if you understand what that means. How many of you here have a, a joint account with someone else? Maybe a joint account with your spouse. Maybe a joint account with your friend. How many of you here have a joint account? Good. Several hands are up. Thank you very much. I'll explain that. I'm sure it'll be easy for you to understand. Did you notice in that scripture, he didn't say that we are co-heirs. He says, joint heirs. That is extraordinary. I want you to understand, the Bible is a legal document. A lot of people don't understand that. The Bible is a legal document. It's not a history book. It contains a lot of history. But that's how many legal documents are. They've got to trace the reason for whatever their claims are. And so all of that history gives you the reason for the claims. For the claims of that document. Hallelujah. He doesn't say we're co-heirs. He says we're joint heirs. When you are a joint heir with someone else, now first of all, let me explain co-heirs. If you're co-heirs, 
It means that you can share what you've got there, maybe 50-50, maybe 40-60, maybe 35-65, maybe 30-70, 20-80, 10-90, whatever. I take my part, you take your part. So we are co-heirs. We share what we have in whatever percentage for everyone. When you are joint heirs, it is not shared. Joint heritage means I own 100% as you own 100%. You don't get nothing without me. I don't get nothing without you. We own it together the same way. It is not shared. It is not shared ownership. It is joint ownership. It's different from co-ownership, which is shared ownership. Now, this is amazing. Can you imagine that this is in the Bible? I mean, you read this kind of stuff, you, you, you don't know whether you want to die or not. You, 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 you're thinking, God, you scream and scream and scream. Let me tell you, sometimes you hear preachers shouting. It's some of these things that make them shout. Do you understand? That's why some of us find it difficult to remain here completely. It's very difficult for me. It's hard. And I, I, I praise those who are able to, you know. But sometimes I get too excited. I, I'm unable to. I, I, I get beside myself. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So don't, don't feel bad when, when preachers are shouting and screaming. Sometimes they are not able to say everything that is inside them. You know, they're telling you some, but some other things are exciting them inside. For which reason they are shouting and screaming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Joint heirs. hi -ya -ya. With Jesus? Don't you know who Jesus is? How could we be joint heirs with Jesus? But well, that's what the book says. That's what the book says. Now, there are those who are against Preachers who preach prosperity. I wonder, how can you read this and preach anything else? What else are you going to preach? You're going to preach the Bible. If you're joint heirs, what does that mean? You find that you, 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 you go beyond the level where you're asking for cars and houses and money. Those things are too small. I don't ask God for money. I don't ask God. I don't pray for things. I don't ask God for money. I don't ask God for things. How, what will I ask him for? What? What am I going to ask him for? Ask him for what? When I pray, I pray for people about different things. I pray about, you know, relationships, people. I pray about all of that. But I, I, I can't pray for God to give me something. Give me what? Give me what? Didn't you read that? I'm a joint heir. No. What is he going to give me? What, what is he going to give me? Can he give me what's already mine? He told me that I'm a joint heir with him. How can I ask him for it? I know some of you you, you, you think, oh, but this is just an isolated scripture. It is not an isolated scripture. Let me show you something. First Corinthians, go to First Corinthians. Loka baradiga sansa skara, telogom bradiga haya. Aya go saparanada. Aha. You ready for this? <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3. I want you to read from verse 21. Read. I want you to read it yourself. Read it now. One, two, go. <laughs> Don't say it's not there. You are seeing it now. What are you going to make out of this? 
He says, let no man glory in men. You know what this means? He's telling you, don't be, don't be proud of who you are associated with. And say, well, you know, uh, I'm related to the king of uh, such and such a place. I'm related to the uh, prime minister. I'm uh, related to uh, Dr. So-and-so. I, I, I am a so-and-so son. We got this and we got that. He says, don't let that fool you. He said, because you, all things belong to you. Let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Okay. Okay, just in case you are thinking, uh, this may be relative to, let's read further, okay? Look at it, next verse, look at it. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or, read, or what? Or, 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 or. Read all. All are yours. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, did you notice the tenses? He didn't say shall be yours. He said all are yours. All are yours. Okay, read the next part. And ye are Christ. That means you belong to Christ. And Christ is God's. Christ belongs to God. Shout amen, somebody! So this, this is not the future. So when you're asking God, oh God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You're making a mistake. You're asking for what's already yours. What you have to learn is how to take possession of that which belongs to you. Shout amen, somebody! Let me explain another thing. You got to get this. The difference between some of us I want to tell you, the difference between some of us is, is very simple. Some Christians are living in promises. You know, they sing that song. When I remember his promise, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promise, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promise, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his promise. You see, they, they are excited about the promises of God. So they talk about the promise, the promise. But some of us are living in the promise. Can you see it? Some are seeing the promise of God far away. Some of us are seeing that the promises of God are fulfilled in us. Let me take this further so you can understand it. It is a very deceptive thing in the church of God, but many don't realize it. And that's why I pray that you open your eyes, your, your, your ears and your heart and hear me, hear me well. I'm not sharing with you my thoughts. I'm not sharing with you my ideas. I'm showing you the scriptures from the word of God. And I want you to accept the word because the word of God is so plain and so simple. Not many people go into the word of God. They just inherit the stories that they were told from yesteryears. Instead of going to the book by themselves. Look at the book for yourself. It is easy to understand. Now that Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has resurrected, Christ has ascended, and by the Holy Spirit lives in us. What are you still waiting for? Let me show you another thing. You know, a lot of times many think that um, we are in a covenant relationship with God. Uh, and this may help you. Because I hear this preached all, all around the world. How that we are in a covenant with God. And as long as you think that you are in a covenant with God, something will be wrong. You will find yourself trying to fulfill your part of the covenant. You'll be struggling to fulfill your part of the covenant so that God will fulfill his part of the covenant. But Christians are not in a covenant with God. That may shock some of you, I know. But hear me well. Because I'm going to show you from the Word, okay? I have done searches just like you in the Bible about covenants. Okay? I know what the Bible says about different covenants in the Bible. But I want to show you something simple. We all know the Abrahamic covenant is the major covenant through which Christ came. 
We all know according to the scriptures that Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. For the Bible, the promise that God made to Abraham was that Abraham and his seed. And if you start in the book of Galatians chapter 3, he tells us that when God made the promise, he said to your seed. And that God didn't say your seeds require, uh, referring to many, but of one, your seed, which is Christ. And that the promises of God that were made to Abraham were actually made to his seed, which is Christ Jesus. Then it says, if you are Christ, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise. Heirs. Heirs. Let me explain further. It's very simple. Now, can I get... Uh, mm, hi. Can I get a, a guy and... Uh, any two people, a lady and... A gentleman from the choir. Just come up quick. Then I, I want uh, any, any other person, male or female, come. Join them. Just, just one. Good, good. Come. Oh, it's easier. It's easier. I want you to watch this with me now. Come. Come. Aha. Uh -huh. I think this dress even makes it easier for me. Imagine this. Imagine that this man got married to this woman. Imagine that. Okay? That would mean that they have a covenant relationship. A covenant of marriage. How many of you understand that? Just want to be sure. Wave your hand so I can see you. Thank you. So if both of them were married, they would have a covenant relationship. She would be in a covenant with her, uh, he would be in a covenant with her, and she would be in a covenant with him. Imagine that based on this relationship, they gave birth to this one. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> Imagine that they both, from their covenant relationship, gave birth to this one. Tell me something. This is the father. Is he in a covenant with this daughter? Tell me. Is there a covenant between them? No. Is there a covenant between the mother and the daughter? No. The covenant is between father and mother. Who is this one? This one is the product of the covenant. This is the fruit of the covenant. This is the result of the covenant. Who are Christians? Christians are the result, the fruit, the product of the Abrahamic covenant. We are children of the covenant. Can you shout amen, somebody? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. So we are not in a covenant with God. We are the result of the covenant. We are the children of the covenant. You say, huh? Huh? huh, huh? <laughs> but that's so simple. So simple for you to understand. So every time you study the covenant, Understand that we are not trying to fulfill any covenant. We're not. We were born of the covenant. We came out of the covenant. We are the result of the covenant. We are the heirs of the covenant. Can you shout amen? amen? So you see, that's why I never have to believe God because of the covenant to take care of me. Uh, I am the result of the covenant. Hallelujah. Just enjoying the blessings of God. Just walking in the glory. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. I want you to see the sense of this very simple. Look at it. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Read it for me. You that can read, <laughs> read this now. And read it out. Want to go? Ah, uh, stop. Is that a possibility? It's right there. Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant. You mean in the same way that they were children of the prophets. 
the same language. They were children of the prophets. That means descendants of the prophets. They were descendants of the covenant. They were the offspring of the prophets. They were the offspring of the covenant. Like that girl was the offspring of that marriage covenant. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant, which God made with our fathers. Can you shout amen, somebody? <laughs> Woo! So you can understand who you are. You can understand why you can chin up, square your shoulders, walk tall, and have no fear. Because you are a child of the covenant. <laughs> All things are yours. He said the world is yours. He said life, death, whatever. Which means death is in your control. That, that, that might sound too big. But I'll tell you something. The church will catch on the revelation. You know, revelation is progressive. There are some things that we are sharing today from the Word of God, which are so simple and everybody understands very simply. But years ago, if you said those things, Christians would be angry with you because they never understood those things. But the Bible tells us how that God, through the angel, spoke to Daniel the prophet. And he said, in the last days, knowledge shall increase. In fact, he said, knowledge shall be increased, meaning that God was going to give more knowledge. And it's happening all over the world. There's more knowledge in science and technology, but there is more knowledge in the spirit as well. Maurice Serlo, the man of God, says all truth is parallel. As it's happening in the spirit, it's happening in science and technology. It's happening in the arts. So the church is not left out. We are learning more. We are understanding more. These are the last days. He said, the knowledge shall be increased. Then he said, men shall go to and fro, meaning that communication will speed up in the last days. And that's what's going on. There's better communication today than the world has ever known. Hallelujah. So we're children of the covenant. All things belong to us. When you know it puts you in a better position because what's next is learning the applications. See, electricity was always in this world until it was discovered. It didn't come when it was discovered. It was always here. But men found out about electricity and electrical laws and now they can have the benefit of electricity. If they didn't know Electricity will still be in the world, but they will not know what to do with it. Same thing with spiritual laws. There are all these blessings I've talked about, but there are spiritual laws to their applications. And the scriptures does tell us what these spiritual laws are. I believe I'll have more time tomorrow to share some of those laws with you. So you can discover the spiritual laws. They are so simple. Spiritual things are not, are not mysteries to the children of God. They are mysteries to the world. But when you come into Christ, the spiritual things are decoded. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's begin with verse 6. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. The word perfect means mature, okay? It's translated from a simple Greek word, meaning mature. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Look at the next verse. But we speak the wisdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you notice he didn't say we speak of the wisdom of God? He says we speak the wisdom of God. What I'm speaking right now is the wisdom of God. Because this is a revelation of God. This is the Word of God. It is not in the mental realm. Let's follow this. Look at the scripture. It's there right on the screen. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. That means in esoteric language. Are you hearing this? In a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. You see, this is why people don't understand it. But if you are in Christ, you should understand it. Look at it. 
But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Next verse. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Go on. But as it is written, he quotes a scripture from one of the prophets. He says, I had not seen. Now remember, <laughs> what he's quoting is in the Old Testament. He says, as it is written. So he quotes a scripture of the prophets for the future. Then he tells us that that future has come. Let's look at it. This was what the prophet said. I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Them that love him? Look at the next verse. But God hath revealed them unto us. So we are not trying to find out. They are revealed to us. They belong to us. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Oh, thanks be unto God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This is amazing. How can we explain it? Who are we? Who are we? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We are born of the word of God. That means we are the offspring of the word. Jesus was made the word. He was the word of God in flesh. We are the word of God in flesh. You say we are the word of God in flesh? Yes. If you're born of a dog, you're a dog. If you're born of a cat, you're a cat. If you're born of a camel, you're a camel. If you're born of the word, you are the word in flesh. And just for the records, just in case you're thinking, is that possible? Yes. Yes. I'll take you there. You know, when you study the Bible, Christianity is discovered in the epistles. The Old Testament talks about the law and the prophets. Then you come into the New Testament. It starts with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John reveal Jesus. They are the stories, the revelations, the compilations of the acts and times of Jesus, the Messiah. Then you go from there to the book of Acts. The acts are a description of the works of the apostles and disciples after the ascension of Jesus Christ. Then you come into the epistles. What are the epistles? The epistles are the revelation of the church. That means if you want to know Christianity, go and study the epistles. If you know, want to know who a Christian is, if you want to know what the church is, if you want to know what life you're supposed to be living, go and study the epistles. The epistles are the revelation of the church. They are called letters. They are called epistles. But I want to show you something. Are you there? Okay, now. Legrondos keep a hand the Ha, you say, what's that? Kill on Angonga, Rahas de Plahongo, Shalata, Sevra Madigos, O Prapalia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. I didn't hear your voice. Just want to show you something. It's very, very simple here. You know, <clears throat> I used to sing those beautiful songs. That's it. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. In my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. In my father's house, above. Happy, happy, happy we shall be. How many of you ever heard that song? Oh, glory. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Just a little thing I want to show you here, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I want you to read from, oh God. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. I, oh, oh. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 3, read from verse 2. Look at it yourself. Read. Ah, 
Stop. Read it again. Hear what? Uh, uh, no, you didn't hear it. Read it one more time. Ye are what? Ye are our epistle. Do you, do you understand what the man is saying? The epistle was a message. The epistle was his message. It was his written message. And he says, you are our epistle. You are our message. You are our writing sent out to the world. You are a message from God. Oh, so you are the epistle in flesh. I told you. I told you. Come on, let's see more. Yeah, our epistle, our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. It's not over yet. Read the next one. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ. So you are the epistle of Christ. Hi! You see, when you understand this, your life takes on a new meaning. Every step you take, you know you are the revelation of the word of God. You understand that not only are you receiving the word, you are the manifestation of the word. That is Christianity. Christianity is acting out the word. Christianity is living out the word. Hear this, hear this, and hear me well. In the Old Testament, God said to the people, Obey my voice. If you will obey my voice, if you will obey my voice, I will make you, I will make you a kingdom of priests if you will obey. Exodus chapter 19. I'm going to begin to round off with this. This is too powerful. I want you to see this. Exodus chapter 19 from verse 5. This is an amazing reality. Exodus chapter 19 from verse 5. Read. Want to go. No, stop, stop, stop. I want you to read it. Don't say you didn't see it. See it now. Read. Want to go. Uh-huh. And keep my covenant. Uh-huh. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine now stop this is the book of exodus this is in the old testament this is god talking to the old testament people of israel i want you to see this they are called the old testament church okay so he says if you will obey my voice if you will keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. He says, if you will do this, this is the condition. Then I will make you. You shall become a peculiar treasure. Now, go on. Next verse. And ye shall be unto me. Read it. Read it. Want to go. Ye shall be. Uh -huh. unto me, a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So God said this to Moses to tell the children of Israel. This is amazing. I want you to remember the things you saw. In fact, you should mark this in your Bible. God said to them, do you realize this is where many Christians are living their life today? They are trying to keep the covenant. They are trying to obey the word of God. To obey. They are trying, 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 trying. You will not be able to make it. If your effort could make it, the Holy Spirit would have never been necessary. Jesus would have never needed to come. Look at this wonderful promise made to the children of Israel. But what about us? Remember, he said, if you will obey my voice. Obey. Who are we? Let's go. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the epistles. Let's go. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this? Okay. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 14. Read. <laughs> Read it out. See it for yourself. Want to go. Stop. Did you see that? He says, as obedient children. In other words, as the obedient children that you are. 
us obedient children. He didn't tell you to become obedient children. He says, yeah, obedient children. Why? Because you have obeyed the gospel. The Bible says, what shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel of Christ? But you are obedient children because you have obeyed the gospel that was ministered unto you. So he declares you obedient children. So he says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves. He calls you obedient children. He doesn't tell you to try to obey. You are obedient children. The Old Testament, he said, if you will obey, you will become. If you will obey, you will become. They could not obey, and so they never became. In the Old Testament, uh, in the New Testament, you don't have to try to obey. Jesus obeyed for you, and you were born into him, into Christ. So he says, if any man be in Christ, in the obedient one, Jesus Christ was God's obedient one. The Bible says he obeyed even unto death. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him. So if any man is in this Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Now look at this. As obedient children. He calls you what? Obedient children. This is a marvel. This is a marvel. Okay. Now go to 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 9. Let me show you. If truly you are obedient children, then that means that what he said obedient children are supposed to have, that means they are supposed to be a peculiar treasure, they are supposed to be a holy nation, they are supposed to be a kingdom of priests, that should be fulfilled if you are truly obedient children. Okay now, look at this. It's right there. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Read it and tell me what tenses are there. One, two, go. <laughs> Did you see that? He says you are. Because he says you are obedient children. In the Old Testament he says if you will obey me, I will make you a peculiar treasure. I will make you a holy nation. I will make you a kingdom of priests if you will obey. In the New Testament, because we are in Christ, he says you are obedient children. Then he says you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood a holy nation, a peculiar people. What he had said, he will make those people if they obeyed. They could not obey. We have become by being in Christ. He says, ye are, not ye shall become, not I shall make you. It is not a promise. It is a statement of fact. A present hour reality. Shout amen. amen. Tomorrow I'll begin to show you how to apply these things. Now that this is where you are, now that this is who you are, now that this is what belongs to you, how do you put them to work in your everyday life? We'll look at that tomorrow. Open your mouth now and start praying. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his kindness. Worship him. Open your mouth and pray now. This is the message you must share with others. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This is it. This is the message. This is the truth. This is his reality. This is his word in us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for this wonderful time, O oh God. Thank the Lord for the wonderful message you have spoken to us, O oh God. Thank the Lord for the salvation. Thank the Lord for the, all the authority which you have given unto us. Thank the Lord for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon us, O oh God. Thank the Lord, you are our Savior, you are our Heavenly Father. Thank the Lord, you are for us, all things for us, O oh God. Thank the Lord, you are with us always, O oh God. Thank the Lord for your wonderful word to us, O oh God. You spoke to, you have spoken to us, O oh God. You blessed us through your word, O oh God. We give all the glory to you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence is coming upon us, O oh God. You filled us with your heavenly presence, O oh God. Thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit is coming upon us, O oh God. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence, and thank the Lord for all your blessings, O oh God. We give all the glory to you. We magnify you. We glorify you, O God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank the Lord for your blessings. We give all the glory to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.